Assalamu alaikum my dear students once again welcome to my youtube channel by the name ms lectures and through this platform i will be explaining to you the very important topic known as the gastro intestinal tract we will we, uh, we will be i will be explaining to you about the assessing methods that how to investigate uh, and how to diagnose the gastro intestinal tract uh, following organs are involved in this like esophagus liver gallbladder stomach Uh, and we would be uh, looking uh, upon the thorough uh, you can say thorough investigation that how to diagnose the disease that is being particularly found in these organs so uh, yes so this is this is the instrumental investigation of the patient which in, involve the abdominal and ultrasonography we do the ultrasound in order to uh, you, you can say know about the size of the organ uh, then uh, furthermore this is the x-ray x-ray is uh, also the you can say method in order to uh, you can say diagnose any type of abnormality visual abnormality that is found in the organ and then we have the mri then uh, we will be you can say in the uh, in the further lecture we will be discussing each and uh, each method uh, you can say in the detail so next so first of all examining the esophagus so in examining the esophagus we use the method known as the manometry manometry is actually used to uh, you can say Uh, uh, you can say assess the motility disorders that are found in the esophagus, and you can also the function. Number one, it is used to uh, uh, you can say assess the motility disorders, and then it is used to you can say assess the function of the lower esophageal sphincter. We know the function of the lower esophageal uh, sphincter is to prevent the backflow of the gastric juice from the stomach towards the esophagus. So uh, this method actually used to check the function of this particular valve. Furthermore, uh, what are the indications that actually tell us to use this method of manometry? So these indications are when the patient is actually experiencing the difficulty in swallowing, when the patient is experiencing any pain in swallowing, and when uh, the patient is suffering from the heartburn because heartburn is definitely due to the backflow of gastric juice from the stomach to the esophagus. Next, please. So, so apart from the uh, method known as the manometry, we have further three methods in order to. Uh, do the instrumental investigation of esophagus which involves the x-ray examination esophagoscopy and the esophageal biopsy so in the x-ray examination we actually uh, you can say check the structural and the functional you can say abnormality or disorder in the esophagus furthermore if we talk about the esophagoscopy we we'll check the structural abnormalities as well as the sites of the bleeding in the esophagus because you can say the acidity can actually affect or rupture the mucous membrane which can lead to the bleeding furthermore we have the method known as the esophageal biopsy Esophageal biopsy is used to check the uh, two uh, two two things. First of all, it is used to check the thinning of the squamous mucosal cells, and furthermore, the other, which is the you can say hyperplasia of the basilar cells. So these two things, which uh, are assessed or which are checked in the esophageal biopsy. First of all, thinning of the squamous mucosal layer, and secondly, the hyperplasia of the basilar cells. Next, please. Now, after this, we will talk about the stomach and duodenum. So, in the stomach, first of all, the method is involved. That is the endoscopy. So, endoscopy is the initial or primary method which is actually performed in order to diagnose the disease in the stomach. So, what we do? We do the uh, first of all, we uh, actually uh, assess the upper gastrointestinal tract. The upper gastrointestinal tract bleeding is first of all observed and it is uh, you can say diagnosed. And further. And uh, after this, after assessing the upper G, upper gastrointestinal bleeding, we actually check the biopsy abnormalities, which includes the gastritis and uh, you can say uh, other diseases, which is uh, you can say known as uh, duodenal ulcers, filling defects, and mastitis. So in the uh, endoscopy, I will repeat again, we actually you can say is used to check the ga upper gastrointestinal bleeding and the biopsy abnormalities, which includes the gastritis. and duodenal ulcers and mass lesions and filling defects furthermore x-ray examination is also complementary to endoscopy in this case and particularly this x-ray examination is used to assess the motor disorders in the stomach and at the last we use the ct scan which is used to you know diagnose or uh, assess the tumor then we have the liver and the gallbladder so the ultrasound examination is used in order to check the what is the size and what is structure as what are the structural changes that occur Uh, during the uh, cirrhosis of the liver, so in this we actually check the uh, these type of things. We check the whether 
there are abscesses or cysts present in the liver, whether the veins of the liver are enlarged or whether the inferior vena cava is enlarged. So these are the things which are actually checked in the ultrasound examination of the liver. Next week. Now, this is the ultrasound of the normal gallbladder. So first of all, we have to talk about the, uh, you can say, shape of the gallbladder, which is the econegative pear shape. And uh, this is a very important point to note, to note that gallbladder size never exceeds uh, more than 4 cm. So, <coughs> but now, talking about the location of the gallbladder, the normal location of the gallbladder is, you can say, it is situated below the superior uh, iliac crest. And it has certain mobility which is mobility which is mentioned here. So in that you can say uh, normal position is the below the level of anterior superior iliac crest. But if it is not detected in its normal position, we must need to examine again uh, from the right side of the stomach. So I will repeat again that if the gallbladder is not detected in its normal position, we must need to examine the entire stomach from the right side. So how it is measured? The thickness of gallbladder is measured on the transverse sections and if the patient uh, you can say is empty uh, stomach so that the wall thickness does not exceed 3 mm or less. So that is also the notable feature in this case that if the patient is empty stomach the thickness of the gallbladder would not exceed more than the 3 mm. So in this uh, ultrasound you are saying that this is the gallbladder, this is the uh, inferior vena cava and this is the portal vein. And we can, through this ultrasound, we can assess the size, structure, and uh, you can say uh, location of the uh, shape and location of this gallbladder. Next, please. So, this is the technique which is known as the FEDS. What is this? This is the uh, technique known as fibroesophageal gastroenteroscopy. So, this technique is has very much, you can say, additional benefits due to the two reasons. First of all, it actually provides us the high information content and secondly, this technique which is known as the fibroesophagogastrodidoscopy which actually gives us high information content and secondly, it actually provides, it, it possesses the great diagnostic ability. So these are the two uh, you can say benefits of that test. Now, you can uh, move forward please. Move forward, yes. Now, at the last we will talk about the endoscopy. Then what is the endoscopy? So endoscope it is a method which is inserted inside the you can say uh, the tube of the GIT and the special probe is actually present in the endoscope which is used to took the, uh, the material the small pieces from the suspected areas of the mucous membrane in order to investigate further. After this the histological description and histological preparations are being done, histological you can say examination is performed in order to check the these three, these three things. First of all, in order to check whether there is any type of helicobacter, uh, helicobacter, uh, helicobacter pylori, whether it is present or whether this is the cause of infection. Then, secondly, we have to check the tumor, and then what are the structural changes that occur in the mucous membrane? Because due to acidity, the mucous membrane thinness can occur, and this can lead to you can say heartburn. So, in this lecture, I have explained you uh, the uh, methods the instrumental methods of the uh, organs of the GAT and hope you have understood it well. Last but not the least, don't forget to subscribe to MS Lectures. Thank you.